Three years ago, God placed my heart to help traffic women start a new life. It was then that I started diving into human trafficking and was surprised that Ohio was the fifth largest in human trafficking in the United States. One of the most common things I hear is it doesn't happen in rural Ohio. We don't see the prostitutes on the city streets. Instead, they're hidden in houses and in families. We found technology has allowed predators to find victims anywhere through social media and gaming platforms. They focus on vulnerabilities. These vulnerabilities allow them to build relationships with their victims. These vulnerabilities include women not feeling loved, unwanted, or just lost. A lot of times they're young children um, who have lost family or are struggling at being a teenager. Once the relationship has been built, <clears throat> the tables turn and they begin asking the victims to do things that they normally wouldn't do. At that point, it's too late and they feel that there's no way out. We find these women have been physically and emotionally abused, are hurting and broken and feeling unwanted and finding nowhere to go. We teach the women that there's a new way through God's promises. One of the promises God gives is Isaiah 43, 19, that he will bring new, new things to life. We are able to show God's love in tangible ways by listening to their stories, helping them find resources that they didn't know were available, showing them life skills. We show them how fearfully and wonderfully God has made them and provide positive reinforcements and guidance for them. While we also offer professional trauma counseling, we believe God is the true healer and is the one that can truly restore them and help them with their brokenness to become whole again. Today we're gonna to hear a story from a woman we're rocking alongside. She chose to be anonymous, but her story is very important. So can you tell us a little bit about how you grew up? Um, well, I grew up in Madison County and um, my mom wasn't in the picture from the time I was three all the way up until I was almost an adult. Um, I, it was me and my brother. Um, my dad worked a lot, so I was left home um, with my older brother. Um, and he liked to party. So I got introduced to drugs and alcohol at a very early age. Um, but I, I had a pretty good life. Like I had any and everything I ever wanted. Um, I also, my grandparents would babysit me occasionally. And when they did, like my grandfather would sexually molest me. Um, and my uncle that was over there a lot would, would do that also. Um, and I was scared, like I never really told anybody. And still to this day, nobody has ever found out about my grandfather. He's passed away now, but um, yeah. Is there any situation or event that made you go into trafficking or that you? Well, um, when I was younger, my brother was married to a girl, my sister-in-law, and like I always noticed that they had all this money and all these new cars and shopping all the time and brand new clothes. And like, I couldn't figure out how they were getting it because I'd never seen them leave to go to work or anything. So I was always very interested in what was going on. And I can remember my sister-in-law telling me, man, I can't wait till you're 18. I can't wait till you're 18. And I never really found out why until I was actually 18. And um, 
I found out that she ran her own escort service. And um, so she talked me into it and like my daily life consisted of hair, nails, clothes, taking pictures and her answering phones and me going on calls and she would say, well, you got to go meet this guy at this place. He's going to give you this much money. And then when you get back, you got to give me this much money. So that went on for a long time. And then I got introduced to some, the hardcore drugs, heroin, crack, meth. And I got involved with some really bad people in Columbus. And, um, it got to the point where the only time I was allowed to leave the house is if I was out making money. And as soon as I made that money, I had to return back to the house and I had to give them every last dollar that I made. They made sure I would have a place to sleep. They made sure I had food in my belly and they made sure I had my drugs. But I had to stay with them. I couldn't go nowhere else. And if I got caught with somewhere else, I would get beat up, guns in my face, raped. Um, there were times where I was like, I didn't abide by their rules. So they would lock me in the basement for hours, sometimes a couple of days. Um, it just, it just was not fun. I know it's so hard and difficult to get out and um, can be scary. Like what, what, made you walk away from from them or how did you get out well <clears throat> I um I ended up getting picked up a few different times in Columbus on soliciting charges um and I never went to court so I had warrants out for my arrest and um one of the last times I got picked up they arrested me on my warrants um and thank God they did because that was my way out. Um, as soon as I went to jail, they had me in jail for a couple of months and then they shipped me clear down to Waverly, Ohio. And I went to Waverly and then to Chillicothe and I was out of town for well over a year. And um, yeah, that's how I got out. So, when you were out, you were able to meet She Dreams again, and how have they been able to help you kind of stay financially stable and um, remain out of trafficking? Um, well, they have helped me get my own place with my children. I have my children back in my life. Um, they helped me get my own place. They helped me with budgeting, which is the worst thing ever but that's okay um, they just help me believe that there's really people out there to help you not everybody's out there to get you or to hurt you um, and they really helped me see that what's one thing you would tell somebody that's in trafficking now um, knowing what you've been through um, <clears throat> Well, when I was still out there, I thought that there wasn't a way out. Like there wasn't nobody that cared, nobody that wanted to help me. There weren't no kind of resources or anything, but that is far from the truth. There is thousands and thousands of resources and people out there that want to help you. Just reach out for help. Well, thank you for sharing your story. I know it's going to help a lot of other women who are trafficked. If you want to walk alongside these women and help them, now's your chance. We can use financial support to help them financially start a new life. You can walk alongside them, walking truly beside them and being a part of their life, hearing their stories. Or you can have us come speak to one of your groups and learn more about human trafficking. My prayer is that God places in your heart your next step and that you're obedient to his calling.